Let's continue our review of the UV 9D Mate by looking at the Mate's CPS. When dealing with radios with over a hundred channels, you're going to want to do many of your programming tasks with either the manufacturer's customer programming software or with Chirp. Since the KGUV9D Mate has 999 channels, that certainly applies here. Like most of the manufacturer's CPSs, the Mate CPS is functional but basic. By that I mean it allows you to do all the basic radio management tasks, including setting radio variables, setting up the repeater function, programming channels, and grouping those channels into scan groups. What it doesn't allow you to do is to easily import or export channel lists. This is pretty much the same as every other manufacturer's CPS I've ever used. Since the Mate is not a brand new radio, that means that the Chirp Radio programming software has a KGUV9D choice that works with the Mate. The KGUV9D Plus choice in Chirp interacts with the Mate just fine. It also means that the extra features included in Chirp are available to you with your new Mate. For me, that means the ability to import pre-programmed radio service channels such as GMRS and marine band channels as well as importing repeaters from repeaterbook.com. This feature saves you a bunch of typing. As I'll show you in the following clip, if you read your radio into the Oshan CPS after importing channels in Chirp, it populates the transmitter frequencies into the channel display. Although the radio won't transmit out of range frequencies, I discovered that the Oshan CPS won't allow you to write those channels back to the radio. The fix is easy. Just delete the transmitter column frequencies from the channel list for out of range channels before you write them back to the radio. Now, since it's possible to have to delete hundreds of these frequencies, it's probably best to just avoid the problem and stay with Chirp if you're planning on including lots of channels on your radio. Since this video is about the Oshan CPS, I'm not going to cover the Chirp process here. There are lots of good Chirp tutorials out there if you need some help. Just note that the cable and port requirements I show you here applies to Chirp 2. Let's take a look at the Mate's CPS. So here on the screen you can see we have the UV90 Mate CPS displayed. And uh, beside here my computer I've got the radio connected to a programming cable. I've got the radio on. So the first thing I want to do is I want to double check in my control panel to see what COM port that the radio is coming in on or being recognized and I've done that and so I'm going to go up here to port and I'm going to see that um, it reads only the active COM ports and I'm on COM port 4 with this cable so I'm going to set COM port 4 and then up here as I look I've got the typical windows drop down kinds of memories read from write to view the status bar, uh, file, open, save, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then I've got those same things here in these icons across the, the next level down. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I want to start by uh, either opening a file that I've already saved, which I don't have one right now, or reading from the radio. And so I'm going to click the read from the radio button. The radio is flashing. The um, cable that I'm using right now is flashing as well. And you see the progress bar running across the bottom of the screen. So with the read complete, I'm going to click on OK. And then you can see I have connected this to Chirp. And I use the import frequency 
functions of chirp to get these in because I wanted to add a bunch and uh, keying them in individually, which you usually have to do with the manufacturer provided CPS, it just gets to be hugely tedious. And so I would recommend using chirp. You use the uh, UV9D plus uh, radio choice in chirp to get this, but it works fine here with the mate. And so um, I can go down here and I've got uh, uh, these 20 repeaters plus UHF and VHF call set. Uh, I've got a couple of frequencies that I use when I camp at Quartzsite for the Quartz Fest. Um, then I've got my 440 repeaters that are in my local area. And then I've left a bunch of space. I've got my weather channels here at 90. Uh, and then my first scan group is the first 100 channels. And so I've got the weather at the bottom of my scan group here. Now, uh, I then have uh, a number of frequencies here programmed in scan group two, beginning at number one. Here are the GMRS frequencies. Here are the uh, MERS frequencies. Uh, here are some uh, marine band frequencies. You've got 999 channels. So there are a bunch of channels that you can program into this and they're all going to show up here. And so you can see they, they cover a wide range. Now the radio is not key to be able to transmit on 161 megahertz. And so the fact that I've got a power setting set here in this column doesn't matter. The radio isn't going to transmit. And so I've got just a whole gob of uh, frequencies here that I imported into this scan group uh, for some of the other things that I might want to listen to. So I'm going to go back up to the top. This is my main memory group here. I can go into my configuration settings and you can see some of the fonts get a little tight. You know, the, the M's and the N's seem to overwrite a little bit. Um, but with these, they're just uh, drop down boxes. So they're very easy to program. These are things that you can set uh, in the radio itself, but they're just easier to do here. In my VFO settings, here are the various bands that the radio covers. Again, the fact that there's power doesn't really matter because the radio is not uh, set up to transmit in those frequencies, only receive. I've got my FM broadcast stations. I looked online and picked out 10 here in the Phoenix area and programmed them into uh, nine of the 20 channels. And so we'll talk about how to do that in another part of the video. And then the remote settings scan groups are important, which is a cool feature of this radio. Uh, you've got 10 scan groups, and so you don't have to scan through all uh, 999 channels. You can group your channels. And so I would recommend giving some thought to how you want to group those channels. So um, when you get to the point of uh, scanning them, uh, they're all together in the same place. Unlike some of the digital modes where you give it a scan group in its digital um, file structure within your radio, here it's just straight channels. So um, 0 to 99, 100 to 199, and so forth. Um, and so give some thought to the channel arrangement so that you can scan those that are related and interesting to you at the same time. Remote settings have to do with programming the side key buttons. Uh, so in this case, I've got the, uh, uh, the secondary uh, button up here. It would be my secondary transmit, uh, the primary push to talk. This is hard-coded for to turn on the FM radio. A long press will turn on the lamp. PF3 is uh, the last of the buttons, and I've got that long press programmed off. I don't want to set off an alarm or anything like that. Uh, so again, we've got the scan groups, uh, call settings, safe settings. They're all available for you here, and it's a really uh, uh, pretty easy program to use. It would be great for making minor changes, but again, I would recommend using Chirp if you're going to import a bunch of repeater channels into your radio. So with that all done, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up here to File. I'm going to go to Save As, and I'm going to go to... Uh, where I store my stuff. I do that on an online drive in the Chirp Images folder. And I've got my KG UV9 Mate. It's going to save in a KG file in this. And so I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to call it today's date. So it's 2022-10-27-2022.
and its mate. So now I've got that stored there so I can access it um, from my online place. So I'm just going to save it. Now, one of the things I need to point out to you here uh, is that when you import from Chirp, it's likely that these transmitter frequencies are going to be in there. It's just the way it comes over. Uh, and you notice here I've taken them all out. And that's because when you go to write, if this transmitter line in this software is filled in and it's outside of the range that the radio is programmed to transmit in, it won't let you write. And so just be mindful of that. So if you think you're done, you hit write and you get a bunch of frequencies that are out of range, that's the warning that says, hey, somewhere you've got some transmitter frequencies that are out of range. The good news is it tells you which channels it thinks it's out of range, uh, but it's just one of those things. And so when you've got a bunch of those channels programmed in with frequencies, you're going to have to go back and delete them. So I have done that. I have deleted all the frequencies there that were out of range. Uh, here are my frequencies that are in range, uh, my repeaters. And so uh, I go through the save process that I just showed you, and then I'm going to click right. And so uh, here is the right command going back to the radio with all the information that I just made changes to, including deleting all of those transmitter frequencies. So again, here at the bottom, you see the progress bar. The radio is flashing at me. And all of that information is being written back to the mate. The right's OK. And now I can um, save this again. I'm going to use the same um, file that I used before. Click Save. Replace it. Yes. Saves it to my online drive. And now I'm done with writing all those frequencies back to the Mate radio. So there's a quick look at how the UV90 Mate CPS works with the Mate radio. As I said earlier, the Oshan CPS is absolutely functional. It does everything you might need to do to manage your radio. As with most manufacturers' CPSs, it doesn't allow easy importing of channel information from online sources. If you plan to have just several local repeaters programmed into your mate, that's not a big deal, and the Oshan CPS is a good choice. On the other hand, if you plan to make use of a bunch of the 999 available channels, then using Chirp is probably a better choice. The Oshan CPS is available as a free download on the buy2wayradios.com webpage. As always, please click the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Be on the lookout for a couple of follow-on videos on the advanced features of the KG UV9 Mate 73 and thanks for watching.